Okay, well, the next episode that I was thinking about was, is that one at the very end of the gospel? I say the very end, by which I mean the proper end, that is in chapter 16 and verse 8, not the long ends that were added to it to uh, make it appear a bit more respectable. So I'll read this one as well. Um, let's see, where shall I start here? Well, it's the... Uh, um, yeah, well, the story is chapter 16, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, go to the tomb, bringing spices, and of course they discover that the tomb is empty. They're speculating about how they get into it. And then they see someone who's described as a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed as you would be, you know, uh, you're in a graveyard, you've um, seen, probably, presumably, seen the body deposited there, quite likely wrapped in a white robe, so is this a ghost, or who is this? A young man is the description, which is quite interesting, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. I suspect they were a bit more than alarmed, to be quite honest with you. Um, I'll not tell you the expression that came to mind when I very first thought of this. Um, but this young man says, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, here's the place they laid him and then gives them instructions. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Uh, you know, as I was thinking about this in light of what we said, that we would look at episodes with particular resonance today as we work out what it means for us, I thought, not only do I think that's a fantastic ending to the gospel for reasons I've already explained on previous occasions, um, but this is the reality of how it often plays out. You know, we all start back in Mark chapter three with those great aspirations of discipleship and being with Jesus and spending time in prayer and uh, being sent out and all the rest of it. But here we are, all the major figures, the ones with the biggest aspirations actually have dissipated, disappeared. They're nowhere to be seen in this story. They are the ones who could tell you um, what it really is supposed to mean, being a disciple. The women are the only survivors. They're not even, you know, if you dig into who these women were, then we don't know who some of them were. Um, but the implication in some of the other stories where at least one of them is mentioned is that, um, yeah, these are marginalised women. They were marginalised by being women, of course, in the context of a culture. They're telling a story that seems unbelievable now, and they're the only ones who are left, the big guys having left, people like me having left the scene, thought, yeah, better keep my head down because I want to live another day. Um, and yet they're pointing to some new possibility. And I was, I was thinking about this in relation to the, it just struck me as I was thinking about it in relation to the pandemic and the buildings are empty. They have been empty. The buildings will not be filled in a hurry, that's for sure. And who is left pointing into a new direction? You know, Jesus or the, the, the angel or whoever this young man was is saying, go on to Galilee, you know, get sent out again, back to where you were supposed to be as witnesses to um, the good news and, and so on and so forth. And, um, yeah, it's a very raggy ending, isn't it? But so true to experience that we have in trying to be good disciples that somehow it all comes to pieces in our hands. Because remember that Jesus had just contradicted everything they thought they knew about what the Messiah was supposed to be like. So, you know, way back, right in the early days, 
they thought he was meant to be, you know, a king who would come in, be some sort of rabble rouser who would chase the Romans out of Jerusalem, out of Judea, out of the whole land, indeed, who would change the world. Um, and he says, no, it's not like that. In fact, he's so insistent then that nobody's supposed to know who he is. And then um, he starts talking about crucifixion. And they say, well, it can't be like that because the Messiah is not supposed to get crucified. So you can understand their disillusionment because by now all the rules have been broken. Jesus didn't end up being the king who they thought he would be. He did get himself crucified. And now it seems like he's broken yet another rule because he wasn't supposed to rise from the dead either. I mean, who believed any of that stuff in first century Palestine? And the answer is, uh, not everybody by a long way. And in fact, when Jesus talked about resurrection with the disciples, they all said that didn't make any sense either. So here it's as if everything that was supposed to be right has gone wrong, and they've done what I suspect we're in the same position today of fleeing away, hiding, not knowing what's going to come next. Um, I'll not bore you with what might come next, but it just struck me, this is why I juxtapose this one alongside the other one, and yet it invites us. I think it invited the original audience into saying, okay, so what is this about? You know, what did happen next? What are we going to make of this story where the Messiah seems to have broken all the rules, and yet he's broken the biggest rule of all because... Once he was crucified, he wasn't supposed to rise from the dead. So what is that about? Um, let's go into new territory, which actually is old territory, but back out there in order to explore what might happen next. Um, and of course, the alternative endings to Mark's gospel, which are listed in all the translations here, um, they thought this was highly unsatisfactory because the disciples were heroes by their generation, weren't they? So it needed to be neatly wrapped up to make it look like everybody was good and they knew what was going on and they understood it all and it was okay on the night when actually it wasn't okay on the night at all. It must have felt exactly like I think so many people are feeling like we are in COVID today. And the invitation is, okay, so we don't know where this is going, but what's next? Let's have a conversation about it. Um, 